<laughs> For thousands of years, humans have been testing their strength and prowess on the battlefield and in arenas. From the first gladiatorial games to deadly jousting, even now, fighting overweight men in front of millions is incredibly popular. Yet despite the big resurgence of things like boxing, MMA and combat sports in general, one has crept out the woodwork like no other. Something new yet hundreds of years old at the same time. Welcome to the insane world of medieval MMA. Between the 12th and 16th centuries, it became tradition and a great game for knights or other soldiers to show their strength without the same sort of dangers that they would see on the battlefield. Sure, you can get yourself bruised and battered, but the likelihood of fighting in the arena at least mean you'd get to go home at night. In the meantime, being able to show off your new armor that you paid a pretty penny for, and especially your skill, winning over fame, money, and of course the potential of future renown was a tempting thing back in the day. I mean, who's going to get the highest wages as mercenaries, guards, or even showmen? Well, of course, the best fighters, and they reveal themselves in front of the crowds. Despite the notion that these games were fights to the death, it wasn't particularly common and really could be seen as the equivalent to a modern day MMA fight. Scuffed up? Sure. Embarrassed? Yeah, definitely. But dead? No, probably not. Unless that is your name's Henry II of France, who during an ill-advised jousting tournament in 1559, a wooden lance of his younger opponent pierced through the king's headgear, shattering into fragments and penetrating his right orbit and temple. He, of course, died from that, and shortly the decline of such tournaments started to happen. Okay, they weren't necessarily that directly linked, but the point stands. Okay, so how do we go from French kings in the 16th century getting splinters in their head to funny hat-wearing Americans slapping axes on their buddy's skull? Well, have you ever heard of LARPing? Okay, it might be an unpopular opinion given the kind of videos I make and probably my audience, but it's not my thing. Dressing up and running around the forest with phone weapons, sort of like chivalry meets capture the flag. I could think of better things to do on a Sunday if I'm going to be honest. But it was in Ukraine that they thought, hey, this LARPing stuff, <laughs> this is for weak people. The soft touch of foam was a little bit too boring for their taste and they wanted to do something a bit more rough. So, donning full plate armor, equipping real, granted blunt, but still real weapons, they started battering each other on the good old noggin. This came in many forms, from huge field battles of hundreds of men at the same time with teams, to smaller tag team based events, to even then progressing into the octagon. The game started to grow, and in 2009 the first Battle of Nations was held in Ukraine. What is Battle of Nations, I hear you ask? Well. Let's take a look. Battle of the Nations was no small event. This was huge. They hired out a full castle in Ukraine. They were not skimping on this thing. National teams of different countries came to compete here with, of course, set rules. Each team had at least eight up to a maximum of 50 fighters, any representative of any of the historical battle clubs, which, yes, are a huge thing that do exist. You see, when all of this started, of course, people wanted to form their own teams. HMB clubs or historical medieval battle clubs started to come from it, most of the time in Europe and, of course, the UK as well. And Battle of the Nations, whilst being the largest, is not the only one. These leagues have gone on all across the world, even in the US, where they have some absolutely humongous wars. These are events that are held every year, where they split up the country into three different sections as trying to replicate a medieval Europe. Then thousands of people fight, and of course, in their different teams, the winner wins. It, it, it's simple as that. 
And it was this that I saw that really changed my idea of what this LARPing could be. Because it doesn't have a great name, and me, as I mentioned, I'm not the huge fan. Because of videos like this. But I think anybody with a screwed on head can tell that there is a difference between running around with foam swords and full out medieval battles. Okay, I still think they cater towards a similar audience. I, I'm not, I'm not going to beat around the bush there. Going back to the Battle of Nations, they only had four countries taking part, being Ukraine, Poland, Belarus, and Russia. Probably countries you wouldn't be surprised being there. And they had all these different game modes. There were hundreds of people that came to watch and also hundreds of people that took part from all these different countries. You had your 1v1 duels, which was pretty self-explanatory. Two knights would get into the battlefield and it would be scored on different hits, so on and so forth. Now, I've heard different rules in different events in different leagues, some of them being three points of contact on the floor, some of them being a little bit more like boxing, depending on where you hit, whether it's the head, the shoulders, knees and toes, indicates how many points you score. On from the 1v1, they have the 5v5, a little bit more like your group fighting event, where you do have some partners, but it's still a smaller scale where a lot of the time you'll end up in 1v1s. Here, it's so important to be the team that gets that first kill. And then you have your 25 versus 25 all out battles. These were chaos. And in all honesty, it didn't end there. In later years, it got even bigger. In just four years, they went from the original group in Eastern Europe to over 20 teams and 400 fighters, with even people from the US and Canada coming in to compete. I mean, what's medieval Europe without a few Americans? As the sport started to grow, so did the organizations. There were splinter groups that came off with, of course, disfunct people that weren't liking the way Battle of Nations was being held. And like every other sport, the Russians were accused of cheating. But you had these homegrown athletes that came out of nowhere, that didn't have a place in mainstream sports, that would then grow some sort of fame within the medieval community. Sergei Yulov was a huge Russian man that liked to beat people up all of the time. He was very strong and he killed many people. He didn't kill anybody, but he kept winning and he started to gain fame. Then Alexeg Petrik in Prague in 2016 took his crown and well, since then he has been number one in the male category 1v1 fighting. And that caused everybody to wonder, okay, this is great. We've got some cool events here, but what if we wanted to go even more competitive? What is more competitive than 50 people in a small arena battering the hell out of each other? Судья, время, готов, готов, Бой! Okay, well, I don't actually know how serious it was for the fighters. I'm assuming somewhat, but this actually started as kind of a joke. In the middle of a Russian MMA broadcast at the halftime show, they wanted to put on these two medieval lads beating each other up. It then gained 15 million views online. So there was definitely an audience for this. Because the rules were somewhat different. Instead of points of contact, and of course getting points for certain hits on the body, this was about knocking your opponent out using whatever way you can to get them to the ground and getting them to tap out, a lot like regular MMA. Until the referee calls it off, it is fair game. You can take their legs out. You can, of course, hit them with your sword. You can batter them with your shield. You can get them on the floor and repeatedly pound their head into the canvas until it starts bleeding, or until the referee decides that en enough is enough. The funniest thing about this stuff is people still don't know how to handle it because it is quite funny, okay? These are full-grown men in full suits of armor, but they are taking it so seriously and rightly so. This is a dangerous spot. People do get injured, not just in this medieval MMA fights, but even in the Battle of Nations, the, I guess this might be sacrilege, but the more casual versions, broken bones, 
bashed in heads, unconscious. People were taken off by stretchers. These are real weapons, and whilst they have been blunted, they are still going to be incredibly painful, being smacked down on you from behind. And, well, the commentators of these medieval MMA events clearly still don't quite understand what they're seeing. Oh, shit! So it makes you wonder, what kind of people does this attract? And actually, the more I think about it, this isn't surprising at all. You might think the main audience for medieval MMA or Battle of Nations style event is complete computer nerds, right? However, I don't think so. Because the way that people have evolved is completely different to the way technology has. And whilst warfare has completely changed, us humans have not. There is still something quite enticing about heading into the arena with a full plate of suit armor to show off your sword skills, to practice some cool moves, and to batter someone's head in. Now, I don't necessarily speak for everyone here, but I think the inherent need to show off your strength in combat sports hasn't changed since even the medieval period. So it's not that surprising that this has become so successful. Don't get me wrong, you can look at LARPing and you can think that this is somewhat entertaining and funny to laugh at. But when someone's dressed up in incredibly heavy plate armor, sweating through their visor that they can hardly see out of and getting whacked on the head by metal poles, and it's somewhat impressive, especially in the high-end professional versions of this sport, to see the athleticism that comes out of it. These guys are proper athletes, putting in the training, putting in the work, and whilst it might not be a mainstream thing yet, you can see the same elements that we have in combat sports such as boxing and MMA. Most of these people get into it through reenactment groups. You might have heard of HEMA or Historical European Martial Arts, which is another more controlled form of this. You have professional referees that know exactly what they're doing and how to keep people safe. You have groups that have formed over years of people training and come together to share a passion and finally wanting to compete to show off what they've learned against other countries and other teams. And of course, the cash prizes that most certainly come with it. This is a really interesting rabbit hole to delve into, and I think more stuff like this should be encouraged. More unique niche sports and something like medieval MMA that draws you in from the sheer spectacle and questioning what the hell is going on, but then keeps you there with the real athleticism, skill and brutality of this combat sport. There is nothing quite like it. It is a sport that is ever growing, but is held back by one factor. And it's not necessarily the fact that it draws in a niche community of historical nerds, but more because it is incredibly expensive to get into. This is not cheap armor. You have to spend thousands on this sort of stuff, especially if you want to actually get it molded and tailored to you and your body for it to be any sort of comfortable. But most people are spending upwards of $10,000 to get into this. Then, of course, you actually have to get to the event in your... <sighs> your armor. And I think this accessibility is something that is drawing this sport back from becoming just another mainstream combat sport. I mean, it's not so far off stuff that we already have, but because it is so inaccessible to the majority of its audience, well, hardly any people can get involved. But maybe that is something that will change. Who knows? Maybe Amazon will start mass manufacturing medieval sets of armor, and at that point, anybody can get involved. Anybody can don their plate, their chainmail or gambeson, and smash some heads in with a halberd. But hey, for now, I'm just going to have to watch it on YouTube.